Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and now you're all having a great day to start things off. Fun strat, Bitcoin analyst Tom Lee has claimed that the cryptocurrency could end the year explosively higher, citing a correlation between it and emerging markets. Lee has made his new prediction in an interview during CNBC's Trading Nation show on the 25th of August. The head of research at Fundstrat Global Advisors has said that he still thinks it's possible that Bitcoin's price could surge to as high as $25,000 this year. Lee has based this assumption on the relationship between the price of Bitcoin and BlackRock's iShares MSCI Emerging Markets Exchange Traded Fund, or an ETF, which tracks large and mid-sized companies in emerging markets. He said, the important correlation, according to Lee, lies in the fact that both markets are running somewhat parallel to each other, with both having really essentially peaked in early 2018, as well as both having been in a downward trend from then on. This is the graph. I'm not going to really go through it as you can see it with your eyes. According to Lee, recent trading activity shows that hedge funds have stopped buying into funds tied to emerging markets due to market sell-off risks, which in turn leads to reduced purchases of Bitcoin. As Lee believes, a change in direction in emerging markets would signal a similar change in Bitcoin trend, he said, and I quote, until emerging markets begin to turn, I think in some ways that correlation is going to hold and tell us that sort of the risk of on mentality is those buyers aren't buying Bitcoin, end quote. In the interview, Lee pointed out that the tide is changing for both Bitcoin and emerging markets, especially if the U.S. Federal Reserve show, slows down its interest rate hikes. In early July, Lee voiced his stance that Bitcoin could reach anywhere between 22000 and 25000 U.S. dollars by the end of 2018. I think we're well on our way. We've heard this many times. It's interesting to point out that a lot of people who are still bullish on the price of Bitcoin, they've kind of changed their numbers around a little bit. Uh, a lot of people were saying that by the end of the year, they assumed that the Bitcoin price would, I heard numbers anywhere from 100,000. I think we were still floating around 15,000 at this point in price. Uh, there was also a lot of people saying that we would hit around 70. And the number that was quoted between March, April, May, I'm sure a lot of you remember this as well, was $60,000 per Bitcoin. I think as the price has slunk back a lot, a lot of people are trying to be more cautious in their uh, prices, and this is where we're getting this 25000 But to be fair, even last year when Bitcoin's price was around one... Okay, we started the year around 900 and by the time we got to around, let's say around 4000 the people were saying that we would hit a max of seven, 8000 uh, 10,000 wasn't predicted until mid 2018, assuming that the trend from 2017 was going to continue. Uh, and then we ended up hitting 20,000 and that kind of broke all expectations. Uh, so it's expected or still thought that we're definitely going to pass 20,000 at some point during this year. Uh, it all kind of correlates with, so there, what it kind of comes down to, a lot of people are expecting a bull run to either start sometime in September. Or a lot of people are saying that the entire bull run will commence once the New York Stock Exchange has launched their uh, crypto blah, 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 because apparently people are saying as well that this will stop all barriers for uh, a Bitcoin ETF as they are the New York Stock Exchange and probably can get an ETF approved relatively easily. But as of now, I, uh, I think anything over 10,000 would make me pretty happy. I don't necessarily uh, think that we need another like $60,000, $70,000 uh, Bitcoin thing kind of happening around there because if that ends up happening, the market's going to have another major pullback. A lot of people are going to get scared once again. So I think a healthy number would be 20, 25, 26, 27, 28, maybe even like 30,000, you know, from where we were last year. Uh, but like I said, we're going to hear this echoed more and more as the uh, time goes on until something actually happens because I think this is now the the Oracle period where everyone is trying to, because realistically, I don't, I don't know if I told you guys this before, uh, if you make a prediction and then it comes true, especially like all these people on MSNBC, CNBC and all these other places, uh, and your prediction comes true, people begin to then follow you. So this is why everyone has like a prediction of what is going to happen in the future. And this is why uh, they're doing it so often. This is why people are constantly coming out talking about what's going to happen with XRP and what's going to happen with this, because people in the financial world will then think that these people are oracles and that they're really intelligent. And this is, I don't know, that's, I 
this is what I picked up on, at least. This is how I kind of see things, at least. Anyway, next up, BitThumb, one of the largest South Korean cryptocurrency exchanges, will open up account registrations after a month-long freeze. Local media outlet Yonhap News reported on the 29th of August. According to a spokesperson from banking partner Nonghyop Bank, BitThumb will meet specific requirements as dictated by South Korean law in return for regaining banking support. Nonghyop has previously suspended its services for BitThumb at the end of July. Rumors at the time suggested the decision had come at the exchange law $17 million dollars in the most recent hack a month previously, they said, we decided to keep the investors' assets separate and we will not accept interest or deposits. This is said by the spokesperson. In January, South Korea introduced wide-ranging rules for South Korean exchanges or cryptocurrency exchanges, which include banning foreign citizens and ensuring all traders linked their accounts to their real name bank account. I spoke about that and I thought that was weird that you were able to have an account without using your real name is, is kind of weird. Anyway, BitThumb has had a checkered history with several hacks piling pressure on executives to ensure compliance. With the fresh agreement due to come in force on the 30th of August, markets have already begun reacting. Trade volume on BitThumb, which has tanked following the banking problems, have increased precipitously in the past 24 hours. If you may have noticed the last two days, day and a half, two days, uh, this is why the markets, or it is believed... And this is why the market started going back up. It's because uh, when you have a major player kind of getting back into the game, a lot of people, the market actually slumped a tiny bit, kind of four, five, six, seven, eight percent. When any when when any hack happens on a cryptocurrency exchange, this is when prices will go down. But when you have one of the major exchanges, especially one of the major exchanges in a country that is or was at least for a time controlling the cryptocurrency market, for those who are relatively new here, South Korea was dominating. The cryptocurrency space in 2017 or early 2018. Uh, so anytime that we had bad news about South Korea, the prices went down. When we had news around end of December, January of last year and this year, uh, that the South Korean government was thinking about banning cryptocurrencies, the prices completely collapsed because South Korea was controlling the market. So the fact that we have one of the largest exchanges, or I guess potentially soon to be again the largest exchange in South Korea, uh, announcing that they are going to be open for business in the next couple of days, or even today, or maybe tomorrow, whenever that day might be, uh, this market will definitely react, and this is why prices were up a tiny bit, because everyone is very excited for a large number of players to kind of get back into the game, and this is why we have so much, uh, a lot of people keep saying in, or rather, not a lot of people, but I read people saying in the uh, comment section, talking about uh, why should people care about China or or other countries? It's because they're they're major players. It, it, it has not a lot to do with their uh, population, even though China has a lot of people, as we know. Um, it has more to do with some, for some reason, the East, if you want to call it that, or um, Asian countries. Once you get not from Europe and a little bit further east, uh, they have a tendency to. Uh, how do I say this? Their economies went through a period of. Uh, change that was a lot more rapid than the West. Um, they didn't really go through the uh, the credit card and all these other like check phases because of how their countries were in the past. And they kind of slipped from where they were in the 70s or 80s to this kind of digital world in the late 90s, early 2000s. And they are usually the catalyst for a lot of market movements because uh, I've read a, a, uh, an article about this and it says that they are, um, because of how they are and how their economies are more so, that they are more prone to uh, digital investments and they are more comfortable with uh, digital assets. And this is why the, it is believed that Eastern countries uh, have taken to uh, digital currencies quicker than people in the West who are still used to checks or this or whatever the case might be. Anyway, let's move on. IOTA is in the news. IOTA has successfully signed a Volkswagen Group worker, her name is Janine Hertel, who from now on will be working with IOTA's mobility and automotive adoption team as a senior project manager. Uh, this article has a lot of spelling errors, so forgive me in advance. Janine fell in love with IOTA's Tangle some time back. With her colleagues at Volkswagen, she developed the idea of the software over the air. POC using the IOTA Tangle, a statement by IOTA Foundation stated, this is her. During the time, she also learned about many other opportunities in to adopt DLT to the automotive world. 
especially for autonomous vehicles and their business models in MAAS applications. Janine has also consulted on several strategic projects in the aerospace and transportation industry with a strong focus on IT and engineering. A lot of this, like I said, is written very oddly. Janine has a passion. She studied communication. Uh, the main focus was on developing an integration platform called My Open Factory with a consortium of ERP providers together with small and medium-sized and mechanical engineering companies to reduce the complexity of intercorporate interoperability between ERP systems. Janine, will, while showing enthusiasm towards her new appointment at IOTA, said, I strongly believe in IOTA's technology and the vision of a machine-to-machine -machine ecosystem. Examples include vehicles paying for services on demand, such as in-car infotainment, delivery, parking on-site and off-site, driving through countries with toll rolls, sharing electric power, and software upgrades. Most of these ideas are still at an early prototype stage, but I'm proud to be part of this change. No official word yet if they are going to actually be using IOTA's coin. I don't have the thing open right here, but if you may have noticed, uh, if you look at the IOTA charts about a day or two ago, the IOTA price kind of went completely insane, and I assume it was because of the clarification uh, that uh, someone from Volkswagen would be working with IOTA, which in turn, you know, even if they're just using the blockchain for now, uh, the solidification of a project or the clarification that someone from Volkswagen is actually working with IOTA is a major thing because IOTA in the past has come forward with news that they had partnerships and people then came forward and said, no, we're actually not partnered with them. We plan on using their Tangle. So an actual person from Volkswagen working on the IOTA team is very significant. I am going to assume that at some point when all of this gets ironed out, because a lot of people still think uh, or they don't like IOTA, whatever ideas you may have about the project, that when we finally do, uh, or when IOTA, the Tangle is finally officially integrated into all of these things, I'm going to say we have about two or three years until we get like proper news about it. they are also then going to have news about the token IOTA, also being able to being used or to be used through all these things that she was talking about, like tolls and paying for things and blah, blah, blah. That's, uh, I don't know them. That's not saying that they are actually going to use the IOTA token. It's more of like a, you know, typically I'm pretty sure rather, you know, they're not just looking at the tangle. I'm sure they're also looking at the use cases of being able to actually use the token as well. That's just kind of how I feel about it. Anyway, that is the IOTA news for today. Um, very nice to hear that they are continuously moving forward. I did not care for IOTA in the very beginning, uh, but it's nice to hear that they are um, ironing out the kinks uh, because they were not doing too well in the very beginning. Anyway, let's continue on. India is in the news today. On the 29th of August, the Reserve Bank of India, or the RBI, publishes annual report for the year of 2017 to 2018. According to RBI's observation, a growing interest towards cryptocurrencies can be seen among Indian investors. Explaining the effects of demonetization in India, RBI states that India has seen a significant decrease in deposit growth in banks due to restrictions on withdrawals and deposits. On the 31st of March 2018, the economy saw an 11% drop in deposit growth from the year before. RBI also mentions that the monetization effect has lowered people's interest, less attractive in bank deposits. I'll try and touch on that in a second. In connection with the above RBI stated in the document, it said, the combination of surplus liquidity conditions in the wake of demonetization and lower offtake of credit consequent upon slower economic activity also worked to mute the expansions of deposits in H1 and quote. Moreover, the above scenario has led to an increase in crypto adoption. The document stated, and I quote, the public disenchantment from lower returns from bank deposits, I'll touch on that again, coupled with sobering down of returns from other assets was followed by an interest, interesting development. Cryptocurrencies came under focus globally as an alternative source of high returns. RBI explains that the growing interest in cryptos can be seen despite the high risk involved in its trading. Furthermore, RBI believes that the rise of the crypto ecosystem can disturb the existing payment and settlement system, possibly leading to influencing the transmission of monetary policy. RBI also points to the dangers associated with electronic media and stated, and I quote, being stored in digital, electronic media, electronic wallets. It is prone to hacking and operational risk, a few instances of which have already been observed globally. 
Following the dangers posed by cryptocurrencies, RBI also adds that the chance of using cryptocurrencies in illicit activities like avoiding tax is very high. Additionally, the RBI believes that this could pave the way to breach in anti-money laundering and combating the financing of terrorism acts. That is something that all you will never. I think we have about 10 years until governments stop using this. Before governments used to use, uh, I think Silk Road was their entire thing. And then we had things about Mt. Gox and how the prices were too unstable. And now all they can kind of touch on, uh, at least from what we've been hearing, is that um, it, it all comes down to can people use cryptocurrencies and not pay us? Uh, the answer, like I said before, at some point is going to be yes. And this bothers governments a lot. And the time frame that I see for all of this is going to, they're going to connect uh, but not in the way that uh, a lot of people are going to want them to, in that by the time that crypto is finally fully integrated into the world systems and you are able to pay for it with it, everything, and you can do this and you can buy a house and you can buy candy, you can buy a coffee, as every uh, pe as people keep continually saying, uh, the prices of crypto will be very high. But at that point, everything will be integrated with crypto. And this is when I believe that the uh, privacy tech will officially and completely integrate into cryptocurrencies. But on the other topic of why adoption of cryptocurrency rates are so high, many moons ago, when I was younger, let's say even around 2007, maybe 2008, early 2008, if you had a bank account, I'm going to say this, uh, I'm from the States. I don't live in the States anymore, but I used to go back and visit family often and stuff like that. And I remember walking by, I have good memory for some reason. I remember walking by a bank and I remember seeing that the uh, yearly interest rate was, I believe, between five and six percent, depending on which bank you walked by. And this was a very attractive, like if you if if you look at your uh, if you look at your bank account, I'm sure a lot of you have bank accounts. Look at the or call up your bank and ask them what your interest rate is for having your account, i.e. when you have your money in your account, how much are you getting per year? They will typically tell you 0.1% or 0.25%, and they will tell you how great and how attractive this is, and they'll try and sell you a CD or tell you to lock up your money with the bank. And over the course of a five-year period, they will give you back 0.75% for having your money locked up with them. If you know what inflation is, you know this is uh, this is horrible because you're losing money over the course of five years. You're losing a lot of money that you have inside of it. When it comes to hyperinflation or even just normal inflation, and when it comes to after the 2008 banking crisis and people are trying to find a safe place to put their money, it is quite interesting that people would choose to put their money in a an incredibly volatile asset rather than put their money with the bank. Because realistically, on any given, even a let's say a slightly good day, uh, Bitcoin's price may go up by around 8%. That is more than you would get from about... 15, 16 years having your money with the bank. And that is even, uh, you people have to understand, this is why I really love crypto. Uh, it's all about getting massive quick returns. I mean, I love crypto for what it is, but let's be honest. Uh, when we talk about price predictions, we're not talking about them because we like the sound of pretty numbers. We talk about them because we are expecting the prices to go up. This is why we have these price predictions, even though we're at 6,900 right now. Hitting... $25,000 per coin, 7, 14, 18, that is a huge return. That is, the, the returns you get in crypto, you will probably never, ever get in anything else. This is why I said if you are in crypto right now, you are very lucky. Uh, it's going to become an issue in a lot of countries when uh, other people start to realize that <laughs> Uh, they should have put their money into Bitcoin. The moment Bitcoin, and I'm I'm saying this, I am looking into my crystal ball. By the time that Bitcoin hits twenty five to fifty thousand dollars, more people are going to get interested. And when people realize that the price of Bitcoin is going to hit one hundred thousand dollars, and that they did not put their money into it, and how much money they could have made from it. Once again, this is not me telling you to FOMO into the market. Uh, the, what it comes down to is. Crypto gives such fantastic returns. Even over the last couple of days when you saw that the prices were going up like crazy, they've slunk back down a bit because Bitcoin is Bitcoin. Uh, and when you look at the uh, just the returns, uh, this is going to cause a huge problem. What's going to end up happening is 
This is why I keep saying that a lot of banks as we know them now are not going to be the exact same because what's going to end up happening is, is as, as less people are putting their money with the banks, they're going to be putting their money with uh, companies and organizations, even like Binance, like Coinbase. The banks are going to start losing money and then the banks at some point, you better believe this is going to happen, are going to start announcing that since rather they won't announce that they've been losing money, they're going to announce they, that they've realized the magic of crypto. You can definitely hold your crypto with them. But what's going to happen is, is they're going to start charging you to have your crypto with them. The same way that you pay for your bank account every single month, they're going to be doing the exact same thing, asking you to pay for holding your money with them. And then people are going to be like, wait, I don't get charged to hold my money with Coinbase. I don't get charged to hold my money with Binance or Kraken or any other place because you could just have it there. And you can have it sitting there. Even more so by the time we get around three or four years from now, you'll be able to have it on your mobile easily, uh, safely and securely, assuming that all these security measures are worked on and what have you and then no one's going to be using banks at all and this is why a lot of people keep predicting that we're not going to have banks in the future or if we do have banks they're going to look completely different because they'll pretty much be crypto centric uh nobody wants to have the no one wants to lose their money that's kind of what it comes down to uh and i hope uh i've never been to india i've heard it's very beautiful but i hope that uh india or the indian government kind of gets it together because there's a lot of money to be made. And I think, uh, especially a country like India, a lot of people will be able to benefit greatly from a rapid adoption or quick adoption of cryptocurrencies and how much that would benefit that entire... They could potentially, realistically... I mean, these are this is how I kind of feel about it. I think if a country was brave enough to say that they had a relatively good stance on crypto... And that they were adopting it, they were doing so and so with it. They were they would allow it as payments. People in that country could become some of the wealthiest people in the entire world. Uh, but it comes down to a country's bravery and uh, them trying not to uh, be afraid of the future. I don't really know how to kind of say that or really. Anyway, uh, that's just kind of my thoughts on this entire thing. Uh, very interesting that the Bank of India is noticing the changes. I'm pretty sure other banks are noticing it as well. Uh, but this is not going to stop, especially as cryptocurrency goes on. Even if you even if you had your money in a coin and you got 7% of a return over a course of like a day and a half period, that is more than you would get over like 14 years of having your money with a bank. It's, it's, it's just completely mind-boggling. The money to be made in crypto is just disgusting. Last up. Bearish positions for non-commercial contracts of Bitcoin futures are on the decline. According to the latest comment commitments, <laughs> comment well, okay, anyway, commitments of traders or the COT report released by the U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission or the CFTC on the 24th of August. For the week ending the 21st of August, the report shows that the net position of Bitcoin futures declined by 1.266. Short positions fell by 210 contracts to 3,426, as compared to the previous week with long positions up by 56 contracts. As shown by the negative total tally, the market is still overall net short, yet 1,226 is a sharp turnaround from minus 1,926 recorded on the 5th of June. The fresh data appears to reveal a trend away from bearish sentiment, bolstered by strong price performance on Bitcoin spot markets. Speaking on CNBC last week, crypto analyst Brian Kelly cited statistics from a CME exchange, which suggested that the Bitcoin futures market overall is signaling, signaling both heightened demand and a greater maturity. He said, here's CMC, CME's futures open interest of large holders. As of April, you're starting to see a big increase above a 85% growth rate. If you extrapolate that out by February 2019, you're going to have a very robust market here. Kelly bolstered his claims that the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission likelihood of approving a Bitcoin ETF would come by February of 2019. Based on demonstrable growth in the Bitcoin derivatives market, alongside other factors, as Kelly noted, even the fresh spate of Bitcoin ETF approvals, disapprovals, Orders have not led the market to sell off, yet a further sign of market resilience. Uh, he said this before. I didn't. I don't think I made a video about it or had it in any of the other videos. Uh, he believes that there is no likelihood at all of, of a Bitcoin ETF happening in 2018. He said for some reason he predicts February 2019. Uh, there are a lot of reasonings behind this, but a lot of people have been saying that the bearish sentiment overall, not even just in the futures market, 
is completely evaporating. Um, it could be that people are pretty much uh, slowly believing that Bitcoin will go back up or it is kind of uh, people thinking that the bear market has gone on for so long that it is time to start uh, profiting again, what have you, depending on how you are investing in the market. Quite interesting uh, that we're getting all of this, once again, this information around the September deadline. But I'm, I, I think I'm going to try and stop saying the word September. I think I'm, I'm tired of saying that word. Uh, we're very close now. Let's see exactly what's going to happen with the market. I am assuming that on that month, we will be seeing a lot of uh, reveals and discussions and meetings and all these other things talking about integration because I think still me personally that this is going to be the time where everyone kind of comes forth and because I, I the, the sentiment has been uh, that something good is going to happen in that month. Therefore, I believe that if they can get the momentum going, I think we're going to start hearing from a lot of different uh, coins and projects that uh, this is going to happen in anticipation for prices going up. Because the moment prices start going up, like if Bitcoin passes by 10000 again, this is when uh, it is a safe time for projects to kind of release their news and talk about uh, how great everything is going to be because this will um, help with the upward momentum in prices. Alrighty, everyone. That is definitely going to do it for this video. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys are having a great day, morning, afternoon, and or evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. Thank you once again for watching and or listening, and I will talk to you all soon. See you.